And let's be honest here today, there was a genuine shock this morning when Woolworths Chief Executive Brad Banducci announced his resignation. Not shocked necessarily that he was going. After all, he'd been there eight and a half years, but shocked that the announcement came just two days after this embarrassing interview with Four Corners Angus Grigg, where he sought to have something he said omitted, then, as you can see, got up, walked out, and then later returned on the advice of his media team. Now, he's experienced. He knows the way these things work. Yesterday, the Virgin Australia Chief Executive Jane Hurtlicker surprised markets with her resignation, just as plans to try and refloat the airline on the ASX, they continue. And today also, Qantas Chairman Richard Goiter made good on his promise to resign last year. He said that, but he said later in the year he's going to go at June 30 and will be replaced by the former Telstra Chairman John Mullen. So, what looks like orderly change and what looks like chaos? Megan Motto is with the Governance Institute of Australia and joins me now. Megan, always good to talk to you about these things. Good to talk to you, Ross. Look, there's, there's three really big high-profile departures in the space of 24 hours. You start with someone like Brad Banducci. He was going, right? Regardless of what happened on Monday night on Four Quarters, he was already on the way out. They were going to announce it, if not now, very shortly. Yeah. This transition, because you don't just pluck a chief executive out of thin air. No, indeed. And look, a huge part of the board's role is succession planning. So they... And the process really starts almost the minute the new person walks in the door. You start thinking about what might be the process, uh, not just the process, but the framework for succession planning, talent management, all of those things. Because trigger events can happen in all sorts of shapes and forms. It could be a personal trigger event that sees a, a CEO depart. It could be an internal trigger event. It could be an external trigger event completely outside anyone's control. So all of these things can happen at any moment's notice. So it's really important that the board have a plan in place for what they'd like to see be a stage transition, which is what's happening in, in these cases. But also, what might a board do if, say, for example, a personal trigger event happens that sees a CEO depart tomorrow. Yes. Uh, and there has to be a transition plan in place. That's a really key element of what boards are supposed to do. Which, whereas you sometimes see an executive chairman or chairwoman suddenly walk in there and do that particular job. I go to Brad Banducci, and that is, he's been there eight and a half years. Is that too long? And the reason for that is, I know Brad pretty well. I've known him over the years, interviewed him a lot. And when I've seen him recently, I reckon he's tired. Yeah. I reckon he was pretty much over the job. And what's happened here, the brain fade, I, I totally get. He's experienced. It shouldn't have happened, right? But it happens when maybe, you know, you really are just a little bit not quite on your game. The concept of tenure is such an interesting one. And I get asked by, for example, all sorts of organisations about what's right for tenure for not just CEOs, but for chairs as well and for directors. And it's a difficult one to answer because I ask generally an audience, you know, put your hand up if you've worked with an amazing director or an amazing CEO that's still got pip in their, you know, their pep in their step, 10 years on, 15 years on. Try Jerry Harvey, he's been there for a million and years. And that's exactly right. There are some people that can just keep that energy going for such a long time. And then I ask them to put their hand up if they've found, you know, if they've worked with someone who really stayed that little bit beyond when the prime in their life was. And almost invariably, at least double the amount of hands go up. Yeah. So there's no doubt that you want to go when you're on top of the game and it's hard to always tell when you're the okay. person going. So there, here's a classic of that. Alan Joyce, it's a classic. Wanted to go back before COVID. 2019, 2020, the centenary of Qantas, he was going to go at absolute the peak. He stayed on too long. The airline, they had to get the recover. All sorts of things have been done at Qantas. Yeah. We see the results come out tomorrow. And so, as a result, he goes out in a totally dispirited way Indeed. compared with the way he might have otherwise gone out. Classic. Boy, to the same way. That's right. And that's a classic external trigger event. You know, who would have predicted? Alan didn't know that COVID was going to happen and it was going to sort of really fall downhill quite quickly for the airline industry. So, uh, you know, and then that puts in place a whole range of turmoil and difficult decisions are made and wrong decisions can get made. And so that, that really puts the pressure on an organisation. So there's one other aspect of that, and that is where the chief executive becomes the more powerful force as compared with the board. So it's we're almost like the, the tail is wagging the dog. Yes. So in the case of Gorda, and you don't quite know the dynamics from the outside looking in as to who is actually running the whole dynamics of the direction of the organisation. Indeed. And, and this is a really another classic governance issue that boards grapple with all the time, and that's the CEO-chair relationship, but also the CEO or executive and board relationship. 
And this is where boards, you know, the old adage is that the board and by proxy the chair should be friendly with the CEO but not friends with the CEO because the key role of the board is to hold executive management to account. So they might have to sack them. Absolutely. Or discipline them or take any other measures. And so it's really important that they are able to hold their feet to the fire, hold them to account on the odd occasion. That is the board's role to hold the executive's feet to the fire. And, uh, and it's really important that the relationship, therefore, is such that the power balance between those two parties isn't so one-sided that they can't do that on either side. I've only got a couple of seconds. Is there going to be more of these dramatic styles of executive exits this year? You've got your ear to the ground. Look, I, I wouldn't say that there's... A, I think that there's always going to be corporate turmoil. There's a, we're in a very volatile economic environment and that can be a trigger event in itself. But most boards are getting pretty sophisticated around the expectation of transition planning.